Welcome to Lab 5. Thanks for joining us. Now remember what we're doing is we're just kind of walking through the book of Colossians. Now we saw in chapters 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul talks about our salvation and makes it very clear it's Jesus and only Jesus. It's not Jesus plus rules and regulations. It's not Jesus plus secret words or secret knowledge. It's Jesus. In chapter 3, he then starts talking about how to live this life out. Now, many times in scripture, you, you see our faith as a walk, you know, walking with the Lord. It's, a, it's a two steps, left, right, left, right, left, right. The left here represents taking off things that we need to get rid of in our lives. Now we belong to Jesus. We need to get rid of these things in our life. The right step is putting on Jesus, taking off our old way of life, and now putting on Jesus. And so that's what Paul's talking about. The first thing he talked about, and we saw this yesterday, is he talked about sexual immorality, that we should have no part in that whatsoever. We should take that off. Now he's gonna give us another list of things that we need to take off. So come with me to Colossians chapter three. We'll start with verse eight. Colossians three, verse eight, it says this, but now you must put them all away. Now this is a command. Paul's not asking us to do this. Jesus is not asking us to do this. You need to get rid of these things. He says, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. And he's gonna talk about four things that we need to get rid of. The first one is evil attitudes. And he talks about anger and wrath. What he's talking about is an anger that's a slow, smoldering anger that you don't deal with. You just let it sit there and it smolders and it smolders until finally it just blows up. The next thing you know, you just vomit on everybody. He says, we shouldn't have that type of stuff. Jesus makes it very clear that when, when we are hurt or someone said, we're supposed to go to them and talk with them about it right away. Uh, not let it sit there and smolder uh, until it blows up. We're not supposed to do that. So Paul says, get rid of that. Get rid of that in your life. It also talks about malice. Malice is a, is a planning evil. It's, a, it's, a, it's planning evil in advance. And when it happens, you rejoice about it. He says, we shouldn't be having anything about that. We shouldn't be planning evil on anybody. And then he talks about evil speech. The first thing he talks about is slander. And talking bad about someone. Um, that really hurts Christianity a lot. And so we need to ask ourselves three questions before we say anything about anybody else. And that is this, is it true? So much slander is not true. That's what slander is, it's just not true. Secondly, is it necessary? Is it your job to go around and tell everybody about everybody else? I don't know about you, but I have enough problems just taking care of Steve. And number three, is it kind? Is it kind? If it doesn't meet one of those three, if it doesn't meet all, all of those three, then you shouldn't do it. And then he talks about filthy speech. Now this refers to foul talk, coarse language. It shouldn't be in our vocabulary. Those things shouldn't even be there. And then he talks about another one, the fourth one, in verse 9. He says this, he says, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. Back in those days, lying was is part of life. And uh, the pagans did a lot of that. And Paul says, we shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be people who go around lying all the time. We need to be people that, that say, you know, our word is our word. We will do what we have said we will do. And so he said, lying is, has nothing to do with living for Jesus. In fact, we need to get rid of lying. And then he tells us a couple more in verse 11. He says this, he says, <clears throat> excuse me, here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. He's telling us two things here in this verse. The first thing is this. We no longer can blame our heritage for the way we are. Now, before Jesus Christ, we couldn't change. We were in a rut and we couldn't get out. But now that we have Jesus, we can now change with the help of Jesus Christ. We can change. And so you can't go back and say, well, 
the reason I struggle with X, Y, Z is because of my heritage. No, it isn't because you can change now. This is what he's talking about. He's also talking about this. The church has a real problem with this. Back in the day, there was two cultures, my culture and your culture. My culture was right, your culture was wrong. Let me give you a couple examples. If you were a Roman, you were good. But anybody that was not a Roman was bad. Same thing with the Greeks. If you were Greeks, you were good. But if you were not Greek, you were bad. Same with the Jews. If you were Jewish, you were good. You were good with God. But if you weren't Jewish, you were nobody. And, and, and what it's talking about is that kind of mindset should not be there anymore. We need to get rid of that mindset. We should be people that love and take care of each other, no matter what our last name, no matter what our color is, no matter, it doesn't matter anymore. We belong to Jesus Christ. And this is what he's saying, we are to love each other. This was something that was known in the early churches. We've talked about this, how they loved each other. And it was a, it was a, uh, it was a, a great truth that, that, that people knew that Christians loved each other because the churches are made up of slaves, slave owners, Roman soldiers, Jews, uh, Greeks. I mean, but they all got together. They all loved each other. And that is the way it's supposed to be. So brother, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining us. Let me just pray and then we'll go. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> thank you for telling these things that we need to get rid of in our lives. And Father, you've made it possible that we can we're not trapped in these things. We can get out. But Father, you need to help us. And you said you'll give us the power to break these chains. So Father, help us to do this. Guide us, direct us. And Father, we are so thankful that you are our God, and that you love us and you take care of us. Father, take care of my brothers and sisters. And Father, thank you. In Christ's name, amen. See you next time.